Next is the empowerment song. Get ready for a life-changing experience. You shall be empowered for greatness and your God-given purpose unleashed. And now, Pastor Remy Oshikanlu from RCCG Chapel of Greatness is ready to encourage you with a word that would impact you for greatness. Hello, everyone. This is Remy Oshikanlu, pastor of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Chapel of Greatness. Chapel of Greatness is a Pentecostal Bible-believing church. We are located at 201 Peninsula Boulevard, Hempstead, New York, where we empower lives for greatness. We have two services, one at 8.30 in the morning on Sunday, and the second service starts at 11 a.m. every Sunday. We would love to have you over if you're in New York or in the Hempstead area. This is the Empowerment Zone. And you're welcome to yet another broadcast where we're going to try and help you um, by talking to you about the Word of God and believing God that there will be a change in your life. Today we're starting a series on salvation. Salvation. And you, you hear this all the time. As Christians, we say, what is? Um, you say, you know, you want to be saved. You want somebody to come to the understanding of Christ. You want to teach people about Jesus Christ. Everybody talks about Jesus, but we say, do we really know who Jesus is? Do we really know why people talk about being saved? Do we really know the essence of our Lord Jesus Christ? Do we know what it means to be saved? And so when we talk about salvation, we're talking about being saved, being redeemed from some harm and being brought from darkness into light. And the first um, part of the series is about love. And I'll just title it, No Greater Love. No greater love. The most, uh, probably the most popular verse in the Bible is John 3.16. And John 3.16 in the New King James Version says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, over the last few months, we've been struck by a few um, celebrity suicides. And I, I, it's so sad to say that the celebrity suicide makes, um, makes the news. But every day, probably hundreds of people take their own lives all over the country. They take their own lives because they're in despair. They take their own lives because they've looked to the left, they've looked to the right, they've looked around them, and they've come to the conclusion that the, the life they're living today is not worth living anymore. But I have good news for you if you are listening to me today on this broadcast. You could be listening to me on the internet, you could be listening to me on the radio, in your car, at your job. Jesus loves you. You know, I was thinking about the hundreds or probably of um, hundreds of messages that I have preached over over the years. And you know, a lot of these messages we talk about the keys to success, keys to breakthrough, um foundation of this. We talk about so many things. But we talk less nowadays, I noticed, about the fundamentals of our faith. And the fundamental of our faith is love. And the fundamental of love is Christ. Because Christ is love. When we talk to people, we talk to them about what they should not do. We don't talk to them about what they ought to know. I don't know what you're going through right now. I don't know what position you're in in life. I don't know what circumstances you're under right now. I don't know what kind of stress that you're going through. But I have good news for you. Jesus loves you. And you may say, "Why? How? what do you mean Jesus loves me? I don't even know Jesus. The Bible tells me that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 
And that only begotten Son is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me give you a, a, a practical analogy. If there's a, 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 a war or there's a, a home invasion or, or there's something, some type of strife going on and your dad and your mom and, and you have a father, a mother and children in that house, when it gets to crunch time, the father will put the children behind, hide the children and his wife and he will stand to protect them. If there's no father in that home, the mother will stand, the mother will fight a lion and tell the kids, run, run, run. Because the mother will rather fight the lion and be eaten by a lion than allow her children to be killed by the lion. I saw a story in the news one day, there was this woman going under a pit bull was attacking her daughter or her, her young child. The woman with her bare hands stuck her hands in the, in, in the mouth of the pit bull, wrestled the pit bull, got bitten, and eventually the pit bull had to retreat because this woman, and when they asked her, where did you get this? She said, I don't know. All I knew is that, that this pit bull was not going to kill my child. And so if as humans, we have this instinct, which is a godly instinct, because remember, God created you in his image and after his likeness. If you and I just being mere men and women, if we would risk our lives for our earthly children, if somebody will join the secret service and take a bullet, for the president or the governor or whoever they are guarding. This gives us some sort of inkling into what it means by God loves you. And so Jesus came to this world because of you. He came, he suffered, he was persecuted, he was killed just because of you, because of your sins. No matter how filthy you feel, no matter what you have done, you may be listen, listening to me in the penitentiary, in the jailhouse. You could be listening to me and you're at your wit's end and you say, nobody cares. Nobody loves me. This doesn't matter. But you matter to God. The Bible tells me that God knows how many, even the number, the, the strands of hair on your head is numbered by God. Why? Because he loves you. He cares about you. He knows you by name. He knows you by, by name. He knows your name. He knows where you are. He knows what you are going through. And for you to be empowered for greatness, for you to get to the level that you want to get to, for you to be able to fulfill your destiny as a child of God, you have to understand this. Satan has a plan. And Satan's plan is to kill, to steal, to destroy. And the first thing Satan does is to distract you and then isolate you and then go for the kill. And this is where depression comes from. This is where sorrow comes from. This is where hopelessness comes from. But I have good news for you. You need to know who you are in Christ. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And that son was not just given for fun. It says that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. You have tried it your own way and it hasn't worked out. Alcohol has not solved the problem. Drugs has not solved the problem. Weed has not solved the problem. Sexual immorality has not solved the problem. After you do these things, you still come back to emptiness. But there's someone, his name is Jesus. He is the solution to your problem. Why? Because he loves you. He doesn't judge you. He knows that you have sinned and says in his word, all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. He's not interested 
in the sinner, in the sin, he's interested in the sinner. He wants you to come back, to retrace your steps back to him. Listen to this. The same book of John, the same book of John, chapter 15, verse 13. John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Then by the time you go to verse 14, it says, You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. Verse 15 says, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. Listen to these beautiful words by Jesus Christ. Jesus is saying to you and is saying clearly today that there is no greater love than the one that Jesus has for you. No greater love than the love that God has for you that he sent his only begotten son to die for you on the cross of Calvary. No greater love than to lay down one's life for his friends. Then he explains to us that we are no longer servants of God. We are now friends of God. And that Jesus has brought you away from being called a servant. He's brought you away from having a master-servant relationship to having a friend relationship. The word of God says that we are heirs of the Father. And it says we are joint heirs with the Son. God has brought you in as a child of God. But there's a condition, that condition for salvation is for you to know that the way you are living is not right. It's not for you to be condemned, but for you to say enough is enough. No more drugs, no more alcohol, no more fighting, no more strife, no more jealousy, no more envy, no more bitterness. You are saying that I'm saying no more. I'm tired of the valley. I'm tired of the struggle. I'm tired of continuing to do the things I ought not to do. I'm tired of, of being stagnated. I'm tired of retrogression. I want to move forward. I want to move up. I need to change my life. And once you make that decision that you don't want to continue in sin, you want God to take control, then you come to the one that has already paid the price for you and for me. He paid that price on the cross of Calvary. He's looking at you on drugs and he's saying, come on to me. Because as you labor and you are heavy laden because of those drugs, I will give you rest. Come on to me. As you labor and you struggle with those things that you ought not to do, I love you all the same. I love you in jail. I love you in prison. I love you when you are in that situation. I love you even though you're on drugs. I love you even though that you committed that offense. I love you even though you are disobeying me, but I want you to stop. There is no greater love, John 15, 13, than for a friend to lay down his life for a fellow friend. And this is all that Jesus is talking about. This is the good news. No greater words have been spoken. Jesus died for you. He loves you. He wants to redeem you from sin. He wants to bring you from darkness into his marvelous light. Everything that we are doing that does not glorify God does not help us. This world is temporary. There will come a day when we will no longer be here. Life in itself is just ephemeral. It's temporary. But there's a place that is called eternity. And the eternity is there is a choice. The choice is either heaven or hell. If you look at verse 16 of John 15, it says... You did not choose me, but I chose you and, appoint, and I appointed you that you may go and bear fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give to you. 
Jesus is telling you today that he has chosen you. Yes, you listening to me right now. He has chosen you in your filth. He has chosen you in your sin. He has chosen you in your imperfection. He wants to bring you out of imperfection and perfect you by the blood of the Lamb. He wants to bring you out of that situation and bring you into his marvelous light. He wants to bring you from the valley and he wants to bring you and take you to the mountaintop. He wants to bring you from despair and sorrow and shame. And he wants to give you everlasting life. And he wants to give you life more abundantly. Brothers and sisters, this is not God's plan for you to be weak, to be poor, to be broke. God's plan is not for you to be sick. God's plan is not for you to be hopeless. God's plan is not for you to give up. God's plan for you is for you to have life and to have it more abundantly. And so you ask me, what do you want me to do? All that you need to do is to stop what you're doing right now. To listen to this message and take it serious. To listen to this message and know that there's somebody that cares about you, somebody that loves you, and somebody that wants to help you to change your life. If you continue down this path, it will lead to destruction. When you see your child in the secular world, just as a father or a mother, as a grandmother, if you see your child going in the wrong direction, you know the bridge is out and your child is racing towards that bridge, you will do everything in your power to stop that child and save him or her. If you see that your child is cutting school, doesn't want to go to school, doing the wrong things, hanging with the wrong crowd, as a good parent, it's your duty to call that child and bring that child back to order. To spend your time, your money. Why do parents go out to work? You work hard. You provide accommodation for your children. You put a roof over their heads. You give them a warm bed at night. You work hard to put food on the table. You do two jobs, three jobs. You run helter-skelter. Why? Because you love your child. If somebody is trying to shoot that child, you will take a bullet for your child all day, every day. Why? Because you love that child and you will save that child. And so today, you and I are children of the living God. We are friends of God. We are joint heirs with Jesus. And so God, because he loved us so much, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, just like you so love your child, you will do anything for that child. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to get you out of that mess, to get you out of that situation, to get you out of that strife. John 15 verse 4, Jesus says, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. There is no greater love for you to be able to experience the joy, for you to be able to experience the love of God. You must abide in him. Abiding in him means you must obey him. To obey him means you must know what he's saying you ought to do. Faith, the Bible says, comes by hearing and it is hearing the word of God. For you to be able to take advantage of this great love, of this great sacrifice, of this great privilege, you must know the word of God. How do you know the word of God? By listening to programs like this, by digging deep into the word of God and reading the Bible by yourself. How do you know the word of God? Finding a Bible-believing church. Our church is the redeemed Christian church of God. We are located at 201 Peninsula Boulevard, Hempstead, New York. We have two services every Sunday. You can come in at 8.30 a.m. and by 9.15 that service is over. 
Or you can come in at 11 a.m. and by 1 p.m. every Sunday, that service is over. And then you get clued in to the word of God. You listen to the undiluted word of God where your life will be empowered for greatness because as we teach you the undiluted word of God, we help you to discover God's purpose for you. And once you discover your purpose, then you are able to unleash that great potential and then you become all that you can be. This is the essence of the empowerment zone. This is the essence of the word of God. This is the reason Jesus came to the world for you and for me to save you. That's why we call him the savior. That's why we are asking that for you to be saved from from certain destruction. From you to be saved from pain and suffering. You need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You need to make a decision today and say, I'm tired. I'm tired of the valley. I'm tired of all the struggles. I'm tired of all the pain. I don't want to be fruitless. I don't want to live a life of just existing. I don't want to waste this time I have on earth. Then you will confess your sins and say, God, I don't want to backbite anymore. I don't want to gossip anymore. I don't want to lie anymore. I don't want to steal anymore. I don't want to be angry anymore. I don't want to stop forgiving people. I don't want unforgiveness in my heart. I want to live a life that is worthy of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then as you confess those sins, then you come back to the same Jesus and say, I accept accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Come in today. Change my heart, O Lord. I don't want to have a stony heart. I want a heart of flesh. A heart that would accept you. A heart that will worship you. A heart that will serve you. And as you turn to God, as you ask him to deliver you, as you ask him to give you a turnaround, then you begin to experience a great and mighty change in your life. And as you experience this change, you begin to do new things. Old things will pass away. Behold, everything has become new. You begin to be renewed. And that's why we say you become born again. And when you are born again, you are empowered for greatness. When you are born again, you are empowered for miracles, signs, and wonders. When you are born again, you begin to get the favor of God. Things begin to work in your favor because God is backing you up. And as God backs you up, you begin to see life in a different light. There is no greater love than for a friend to lay down his life for his fellow friend. And this is what Jesus did. This is the essence of Christianity. This is the understanding that we must have. That God knows you. He loves you. And he wants you to come from darkness into light. He knows you. He loves you. And he wants you to live a life that is above and not a life that is beneath. He loves you, he knows you, and he's ready to forgive you no matter what you have done, no matter what you've done in the past. He's a God of tender mercies and he's a God of loving kindness. He's a God that can help you to blot away your sins and your transgressions so that you begin afresh. And this is what God is giving you that opportunity to do today, to give your life to him. To get away from the way you used to do things and start a life of abundant joy. To start a life of peace. To start a life of progress, of promotion. And I pray for you today that that same spirit that caused God to move concerning you will stir you up today and you will make that decision. Because suicide is not an option. Depression is not of God. Hopelessness is not of God. The plan of Satan is for you to be destroyed. That's why the word says that Satan has his own agenda. He has his own ministry. And his ministry is to kill, to steal, 
and to destroy. But by the grace of God and by the blood of Jesus, Satan will not have a portion in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you will receive this word and that God will help you to change your life. Ladies and gentlemen, I also want to talk to you just very briefly as we close. If you have been blessed by this program and if you're one of our friends, why don't you consider partnering with us? To keep this program on the air, we need partners. You can say, well, I'll partner with the program with $50 a month. You can say, I'll partner with the Word of God, $25 a month. We have a, a yearly budget because to stay on air is expensive. And so we have a GoFundMe page. And that GoFundMe page, you just have to go to GoFundMe.com and you just search for Empowerment Zone Radio. Empowerment Zone Radio. And you can commit to partnering with us. No amount is too small. And as you partner with us, this program stays alive and God will bless you. I look forward to joining you again next week. God bless you. Continue to fight the good fight of faith and you'll be victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you.